Since the announcement that J.J. Abrams was uh, rebooting uh, Superman with uh, writer Tani Hesey Coates, it's largely been assumed that this will involve a black Superman. And since they're saying, hey, we're going to be telling Superman in a new way and all this sort of stuff, uh, they uh, didn't actually say there was going to be a black Superman, but the speculation uh, seems it would be, especially considering uh, Tani Hesey Coates' uh, background which has very little to do with uh, fantastic, adventurous uh, fiction. He is a, a political activist, to put it mildly, and his comic book stories in, for Black Panther and Captain America, uh, well, tells you all you need to know. And so it is more than likely that, yes, this will be a black Superman. There had been long uh, rumored an interest, and I don't, I don't even think it was, you can say it's a rumor anymore, that there was serious interest in doing a black uh, Superman uh, film uh, revolving around Michael B. Jordan and all that. So uh, it was interesting because uh, in an interview with Oprah Winfrey, uh, Jordan uh, was asked about this and he said, well, you know, he would be more interested in doing the alternate universe versions of these characters if he was to do it at all. His immediate inclination was to do something original. And there's a lot of black comic book characters who just aren't getting any justice <laughs> that uh, a star like Michael B. Jordan could bring to life. He's already been through this with uh, Human Torch in the failed Fantastic Four film. So uh, I would think he would be a little bit uh, resistant to it. But then again, you know, look, it, you know, they may be uh, putting a lot of zeros <laughs> behind the ch on the check. And, uh, you know, uh, so either him or someone else, they'll find somebody uh, to do it, even if it's a, a new star unknown or what have you, uh, they could do that. Uh, but that's kind of the telling thing where this would only be a tokenizing item and all of that um and uh he's already uh proven himself with uh, more attention was given to him than uh the hero in black panther because uh, you know well the villain always kind of steals the show in these things so <laughs> it's just the way it goes uh but uh, what else he would do if he was interested in another comic book property i i would advise not this one but well you know Either way, it looks like it's going to happen one way or another, whoever does it. So, all right. So this would immediately was assumed that, oh, well, that's it for Henry Cavill and all the stuff that there was been going back and forth between the camps of, of Cavill's team and uh, Warner Brothers. And obviously, uh, they couldn't come to some sort of agreement because there's been no Superman. And it seems it's really bizarre that there hasn't been at this point. Um, and of course he's supposed to have done this cameo in Shazam and that fell through and, uh, he's got to work. So he moved on to Witcher and that sort of thing, but publicly said he still wants the role that he's still interested in all of that. And, uh, just recently now there was, there seemed to be some hints that he was going to do a new project for a, a series or a film, what have you based on the, the Mass Effect uh, video game, which would follow suit with what, what he did with Witcher and all that. So maybe that's it. But uh, his his uh, agent uh, teased that there, uh, something big is about to be announced or happen, and we'll, we'll see whether that even means Henry Cavill, but more than likely probably is. I don't know. Uh, and there was rumors that he's going to jump ship to Marvel. That's been going on for a while, that he was going to be U.S. agent. I think that's already been cast with the... Uh, the story in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, there's, you know, this Captain America replacement guy, and uh, so th that will follow that story. The other character that people are two actually, there was some about him being Wolverine. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. And uh, Captain Britain, which might uh, work even better that he could take on uh, that role. And uh, but it would be a damn shame not to see because that's the big it's a no brainer. There's this huge uh interest among fandom to see more of him as Superman and to get uh, the uh, you know a full fleshed Superman that he never really got uh, the chance at uh, because you know Man of Steel is this sort of freshman superhero story 
And there should have been a sequel to that. There never was. Batman vs. Superman is not really, doesn't work as a sequel to that. I mean, I know the, the timeline and chronology and whatnot, but it's not really so much Superman's story anymore. And it's uh, just sort of this in-between film that was supposed to help them you know, set up their uh, DCEU and all that. Uh, and it's just unfortunate that it didn't happen. Now, the response to stalwarts who are, you know, the, the Snyder Cut movement and all of that, which I always cheered on, and I tweeted out that hashtag over and over again. Uh, want to hold, and I hope they're right, you know, that they, and there's some uh, 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 credibility to this because it's clear, at least on the surface of it, that, uh, you know, Warners and what have you, and their uh, different DC properties. I've openly embraced the concept of multiverse. You had Ezra Miller appear with Grant Gustin on the CW. So the and CW had long since acknowledged as a multiverse. And then, of course, the Flash's own film will be, that's going to be pretty much the core of that story, is that he's going to visit other versions of DC uh, characters, uh, two different Batman, maybe three. <laughs> a new Supergirl has been announced for that. And all that sort of thing. And so it stands to reason, well, you know, you could still have a Henry Cavill Superman project. And uh, basing it on that concept, yes, you could. You could have these side projects. There had long since been a desire that Ben Affleck could return as Batman, not just for cameos in the Flash movie, but in his own project and uh, finish the story that he had been working on before everything fell apart. And uh, that would be great, because as far as I'm concerned, uh, up to now, uh, he is the best Batman we've had. A second, perhaps only to Adam West, <laughs> and I'm not really kidding, <laughs> but that's another story. Anyway, I would love to see what else he could do, and uh, get a more, uh, you know, a, a, a full cohesive uh, plot and story, and all of that. But you've got the Robert Pattinson movie, and despite the rumors of troubles and whatnot, uh, you know, the movie's coming, and it it might turn out to be really good. And then you, here you have the problem. Now, this is the thing they always avoided, was it's like, well, it saturates it all. There's too many uh, uh, of the same thing. Uh, yeah, multiverse and whatnot, but uh, people might pick and choose and not watch the Flash movie, but will watch the Batman movies. Uh, they, a good part of separation provided the theater industry can stay alive and recover, um, then Battenson would be these films that get theatrical releases before they're on HBO Max. I don't know if they'll continue their same-day release type deal uh, going you know, into, into next year and all that. Uh, but that would give some amount of separation for it so that Ben Affleck's uh, Batman film or series could be an HBO Max property exclusively. And uh, that sort of thing could make it work out. But it's not like the comic books. Uh, movies and films are very expensive. <laughs> and they, they can't do them all. And uh, so it, it, it's a troubling thing. Uh, if the idea is that Henry Cavill would continue, because they'd seem to be more eager in him being a cameo character who would appear in all these DC films that would uh, be the connecting tissue for them all. Uh, but he, well, where's my Man of Steel movie? And that's, I think, what he really wanted. And for whatever reason, they don't want to move on that or even set it up. So uh, they might have had his cameos by now. He might have even been, well, I guess he wouldn't have been in the soup for the Wonder Woman film, but that's probably for the best. <laughs> and I mean the 84 one, uh, obviously. But, um, but Aquaman and stuff like that. Uh, he could, but you know, this is, that's it. I'm just going to do these cameos. You know, I, you know, um, and, but that may be all there is to it. Uh, but if he doesn't get his man of steel too, and he walks and he's not interested in the offers to be in the Shazam films this time around, because that's all he's ever going to get. I can understand him doing that. Um, but, uh, gee, why, why is there no man of steel or a new Superman film with, uh, Henry Cavill? Um, well, <laughs> enter J.J. Abrams. Now, uh, in the battle between Snyder's camp and uh, Jeff Johns and uh, Joss Whedon and all that, and I, you, beyond them, they were hired to do what Warner Brothers wanted them to do. They had given up on Zack Snyder, and they wanted this to suddenly magically turn into a Marvel movie, which was impossible. Uh, and a 11th hour changes, like the, and especially to the drastic amount that they were doing to the Justice League film, was was 
was just stupid. And, uh, well, you saw the results. But the idea is that they continue to be these villains. And, I mean, Whedon's gone, but Jeff Johns is still around. He's producing uh, these uh, CW shows and for HBO Max. You know, Star Girl is probably his biggest hit so far. Uh, some involvement with Green and Lantern. And all that. He's got an executive producer tag on a lot of these uh, shows, Doom Patrol, what have you. And uh, But it, that's the television side of it. And uh, certainly the, the latest big success was the Superman series, oddly enough. <laughs> and uh, should it continue to do so, should do very well if it's going to stay like it was in its pilot uh, episode. So um, that's him. But J.J. Abrams uh, came into this. They paid him five hundred million dollars apparently to sign him up and he's moving on to a new uh franchise and that will be the dc characters now he's uh, already uh working on the uh, justice league dark and a constantine film again race swaps and whatnot probably some gender swaps here and there i don't know uh, to which to me always signals to cover up lackluster plots and doesn't really know what to do with it and you just kind of slap it all on there and probably the same with Superman I mean Tony Easy Coates is not going to write this great Superman masterpiece if he does God bless him you know but I just I see nothing from him that tells me oh man this is going to you know, I just don't see it um, so but the thing is uh, so you, you, the idea that you would have all these multiple Superman or multiple Batman and all that sort of stuff uh, gets into conflict of uh, you know, merchandising and whatnot. When J.J. Abrams, uh, when he took on Star Trek way back when and produced, I'll always defend it, 2009 Star Trek film is a very good film. It's very good. He actually it deals with the, uh, the canon and continuity between the original series and whatnot. It just says, yep, this is a time warped uh, alternate reality, and there you go. You don't have to think about that anymore. And uh, it, it, it kind of protects the original canon and whatnot by doing that. that. And but the other two movies were were pretty bad. Uh, the second one was just awful, and all of that. But at the outset, it's like, well, was he really interested in Star Trek by his own admission? No, he wasn't. Uh, he was looking for a franchise to be profitable and uh, make some money out of it in the business. That's the business he's in. And what he was really looking at was the merchandising that comes in off of these things. And so Star Trek toys and all that, uh, uh, and uh, apparel and whatnot, and you know, you name it, and there's a Star Trek emblem on it, and that sort of thing. Well, uh, they looked in to see what's the most popular version of these, and that was the classic uh, Star Trek characters. So that's what they'll do. So they'll do a Star Trek film featuring those characters, so you're going to reboot and all that stuff. Okay. And it was exciting and all that, and they, they somehow managed to cobble together a pretty good film <laughs> at the beginning, <laughs> and then it fell apart. But the problem here was, uh, in, in order for the merchandise based off of his version, which he would get a large cut of that, of the profits from that, is that it would be in competition with the original Star Trek brand of merchandise. And so he was like, hey, could you discontinue that so that my stuff can sit? And they said, No. <laughs> Because it was still making money from, so of course. So here he is now, <laughs> all this time later, uh, after meddling about with Star Wars, which, look, in a lot of ways, it, Star Wars, as bad as stuff as he did for it, it, it wasn't really his fault as to what happened there, and that's a whole other story. But now here he is at Warner's. And uh, what could be their big property would be the DC superheroes. And you can't help but be lured by what Marvel did and say, well, can we repeat that with DC? And seemingly, it seems like you could, but no one's been able to so far. And so here he comes in, and, uh, well, he'll do, the rumor was that he was going to take on Superman and Green Lantern. So this would be his Superman. And I don't know if they would connect that to the Patents and Batman. Perhaps they will. If Warner wants them to, then they will, regardless of anyone having a problem with it. Um, and all that, then do his Green Lantern film, which uh, apparently would focus on Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan, as apparently they will not be involved in the HBO Max uh, series. Perhaps mentioned, maybe cameos, but they will not be involved in it. Uh, so the film will be an Abrams project, I imagine. And uh, he's not really going to want to share Superman. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's going to want all Superman merchandise to be mostly about his Superman, which, look, it's a bit much to take on because his Superman, if it's going to be this black Superman, well, that's quite a different visual than this, what is, what is he, 80 years old now? Of <laughs> a property, so... I and don't underestimate his uh, ruthlessness and uh, you know sabotaging other entities and whatnot. Um, I think a lot of what you can look at what Midnight's Edge and Doomcock have been talking about lately about what happened to Star Wars in this most recent problem because Star Wars managed to make a big comeback with Mandalorian and then bam it all gets burned down with the Gina Carano firing and all that. And it, the pettiness and whatnot seems to be the motive there and uh, sabotaging the one success so that Kathleen Kennedy uh, could maintain her hold over the company and the idea that Gina Carano uh, destroys the whole myth that the reason uh, the fandom didn't accept her version of Star Wars was because the main hero was a woman. So they, it's, it's a misogynist uh, 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 bent and but yet here comes Gina Carano and, and the fandom uh, comes together and, and loves her uh, and all that and so that's a problem plus she just wasn't one of the body <laughs> you know? and all that stuff so you can see how someone might do that so say like, gee why did uh, Gina get targeted it seems likely someone within uh, Lucasfilm uh, stirred up the hornet's nest on, on Twitterverse and got that ball rolling well, J.J., I'm sure, watched all this. <laughs> so uh, it, it didn't get as big as Gina, and so far we'll see how this plans pans out. And apparently uh, Rosario Dawson will be the next target uh, for her, but uh, there was some rumblings that Henry Cavill needs to be canceled because he once dated Gina Carano. And that's the sort of thing that could come about on this is to spoil the pot and the idea that a Henry Cavill Superman product is no good. And uh, it could attempt that. But then he's got to move on. Uh, now there's a successful CW show, so even Tyler Hoechlin might get <laughs> targeted. Uh, and everybody, is like, even me, I looked at that show and thought, this is pretty good. This is probably the best Superman we've had in a long time, uh, you know, story-wise and all that. And, uh, oh boy, Twitterverse is not going to like that. Because <laughs> there's no real preaching in it or anything, you know, other than, you know, family values and a, a strong marriage and caring for your children and being a hero. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Oh, no, that's no good. So that, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see how long the Superman and Lois show can maintain what uh, they presented it's only one episode it could go downhill into the e even if it you know it could go down into the, just the boring soap opera nature of cw shows and repetition uh and filler that could drag it down to beyond uh you got to have your checklist and your, your your race gender swaps sexuality swaps whatever swap swaps <laughs> and all that stuff uh to uh, have your tokens and whatnot and then no real story or plot and becomes unrecognizable as a, a, a Superman or any superhero uh, story. Could happen. But uh, beyond that, because uh, Abrams is looking at a franchise that has his mark on it, because that would be more profitable. If his Superman action figures don't sell as good as Tyler Hoechlin's <laughs> And now it's a bit of a problem because I just don't think they're going to give up just the basic Superman action figures based on the comic books or whatnot. But I don't know. They sure spent a lot of money on this guy. <laughs> and uh, so these are the type of things that could happen. So there's some obstacles here still uh, for a multiverse approach. And based on recent comments from Zack Snyder saying, he just flat out said, I don't think they're interested in any further, uh, you know, f of this version of, uh, of DC characters that he's presented going forward. Uh, which is still they're in this problem because they had the popular hit of Aquaman. So he, he's Aquaman 2, and it looks like they're going to boot Amber Heard out, which I can't, can't blame him. <laughs> but still, that's the Zack Snyder casting. So it, they're still they're stuck with Zack Snyder's version one way or the other. And 
not to a fault. They could, there is the potential for success there. And just all the hype for Snyder Cut and stuff, you would want to build on that. And depending on how well Snyder Cut does, of course, uh, you would still see this. It would make sense to uh, expand on it. But just because it makes sense doesn't mean it'll happen. This is Hollywood, after all. <laughs> and so I don't, I hope it's true. You know, if J.J. wants to do his Black Superman, well, have at it. Uh, I don't really care if I get my Henry Cavill Superman. (laughs) But I'm dubious that that'll happen. And I think there's a lot of forces against it. And uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, But um, so hopefully everybody's saying, look, you know, there was no announcement that he's done and that there will never be a Henry Cavill Superman project or anything like that uh, as of now. But, um, and I hope they're right, but, you know, I, I, I'm I not seeing it at this point. So, hopefully, I'm just completely, I don't think I'm wrong about J.J. being ruthless, but whether they, <laughs> how much pull does he have uh, if AT&T can overrule him uh, and uh, all that. But one of the points that I think it was uh, the ping, uh, uh, ping pong flick show he made the play. You gotta show support. You gotta uh, talk about the Snyder Cut when it comes out. Review it, and you know all this stuff. Buy some Snyder Cut T-shirts. And all that, you know, do all that stuff. And he's right. Uh, you, you make a lot of noise about it, and you really like it. Um, you know, they're gonna say, "Well, look, this is producing. Let's let's move on that." Could be. Could be. So, but. Um, it's a strange place over there in La La Land, you know? Very strange place. And uh, logic uh, falters there. <laughs> so, but hopefully uh, something like that, some form or fashion, uh, could happen. And uh, Henry Cavill will uh, get to do Superman and get a, a good send-off, too. I mean, I would like to see a couple of films of him as Superman. And then, uh, yeah, he could uh, he could move on. Uh, as it is, it's kind of kind of a bad way to go. But um, them's the breaks. Thanks for watching and listening. Say, while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends? Yes. Also, check out my many stores <laughs> in the link description below. Yes, where you can get t-shirts, hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh, yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Joe, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh, my goodness. So many places to watch me and my stuff. Oh, yeah. And if that's not enough for you, well, you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal, Mr. Nelson.